Sleepy. Whoa, that was a really big yawn, Keiichi. I'm usually awake once it's time to eat, but it doesn't look like I can do it today. I was watching TV until late last night. I'm so tired right now. Was one of those raunchy TV shows you loved so much on last night? How extremely vile. Don't jump to conclusions. It's perfectly normal for boys. Nothing to be ashamed about. Rika not patting my head only made me feel worse. Aww. Could you just let me pass out this lunch break? No, seriously. My, you think I would just sit here and allow that? Get really angry if you disturb me. Really angry. <sighs> this is just dreadful. Just so sleepy. I slumped my head onto the desk and drifted off into an afternoon nap. It seemed that Satoko had responded, but I pretended not to hear. Cut it out, Satoko-chan. Keiji couldn't fell asleep. His sleeping face is so cute! You can take him home later. Let him be for now. Let's move over here. It'd be rude to Keiichi if we bother him now. Rika-chan really is a good girl. Let's not wake him up even if the teacher comes back. I take that back. The excuse that I didn't sleep much last night because I was watching TV was a lie. I was in bed at the usual time, but... Because of the conversation with Oishi-san that afternoon, I didn't get much sleep. Just spending the day like this, it's almost as if the incident with Tomitake-san didn't happen at all. It made me think, was Oishi-san just trying to deceive me? But it probably was the truth. One thing was certain, I couldn't speak to anyone about it. He wanted my assistance, but I really didn't know anything about it. If I knew I wasn't going to be of any help, I probably wouldn't have listened in the first place. It ended up with me, again, regretting learning it something I didn't need to know. Whoops. If I, had a, if I had never learned about it, I would without a doubt be goofing off with the rest of them right now. Couldn't help but resent Oishi-san for this. Huh? When was that? I heard he wasn't there the next day. It appears he vanished the night of Watanagashi. Mion whispered to the others from listening, but I could hear quite, hear it quite clearly. On the other, other hand, Rena's voice was even harder to pick up, but I could still tell that she was quite upset. It couldn't be. Are they talking about Tomitake-san? Nili Itake. Taki? Tak Itaki? Not sure. That's all I know. I would have to, have to feign ignorance about this topic, but I needed to keep it a secret. Rather than waking up and being forced to lie to join the conversation, it was much easier just to sit there here and pretend I was asleep to listen in on their discussion. Wait, why do I have to pretend to be asleep while eavesdropping on my friend's conversation? The guilt stung. So, and me, there are others, right? Two. But they don't know if it's the truth from the curse or if it was this was an Onikakushi. Onikakushi? Onikakushi. To be hidden away from, by a demon. What a mysterious phrase. I did, however, get the feeling I, it meant nothing good. Yeah, L. There was another, right? Right? This was Oyashiro Sama's. Yeah. But, but. This year, th at all. Grandma and the mayor had talked about it. Seems they talked to the police about it beforehand. They said they. They take care of whatever happens this year without causing a commotion. Then, without us knowing it, someone had. D d d them. You mean? Maybe. Next could be. Me, I wonder. Don't worry. You get home you got home safely. But it's not allowed, right? There was a long that was a long time ago. Let's stop talking about this. Amidst the uncomfortable mood, both of them went a silent. 
The entirety of the conversation was still a bit unclear, but a few parts caught my attention. First of all, the term Onikakushi. To be demoned away, by the context it was used in, I would assume it's similar to being spirited away. I suspected that was what it meant because Tomitake-san and that woman, it really bugged me that I don't know her name. Well, thank you Mr. Tips for telling me it's uh, Mio Takano. Takano? Takano. Vanished after the Watanagashi. The next thing that stuck out was when Rena said, there's another one, right? Mayon also said, if it's Shoya Zero Sama's, yeah, responding to something. If it's Oya Shirosama's curse, then there had to be two victims, is that what she meant? Come to think of it, I remember saying at the beginning they didn't know if it was from the curse or if it was a case of Onikakushi. It means that the curse and being dimmed away are different things, and they were phenomena that were paired together. I recalled Tomitake-san's terrible end. That wasn't someone something as elegant as disappearing. That horrendous end would have been best described as cursed. Then the woman with him, it means she vanished because she was demoned away. What I do know is that there's normally an even number of victims of the curse proper. And the last point that bothered me was Rena. Rena was frightened. For what reason, I didn't know. However, she knew that something had made her a potential target for Oya Shirozama's curse. I recall, recall correctly, Oya Shirosama should be the guardian deity of Hinamizawa. Isn't a guardian deity supposed to defend the citizens and drive out invaders? I re recall correctly, yesterday Oishi-san said that originally the targets were enemies of the village, but recently there was no longer any distinction between them on regular outsiders. If that was the case, then why then I would think that I'd be the more likely target, having moved here from more recently than Rena. From her composure, I could infer that she was grimly certain that she would be next. I should probably relay what I heard just now to Oishi-san. Informing the police of what I heard by eavesdropping on my friends while pretending to be asleep made me feel terrible. It raised a few questions and left me a, with a bad taste in my mouth. Would it be better not to seek the answer to those questions? As I continued to learn more and more, I felt like I had fallen past the point of no return. I would definitely regret this one day. I would definitely regret ever having learned of these events. The teacher approaches. Keiichi-san, he must be awakened. In the distance, I could hear the ring of the handbell signaling the start of afternoon classes. Gah, I couldn't sleep at all. I hesitantly opened my eyes and raised my head up. It was in that moment when I leaned against the back of my seat. Ugh! There was a thumbtack stack on the back of my chair with tape. Circumstantial evidence was enough. Satoko! Guilty without trial. Capital punishment. I furiously jumped up from my seat, and I tripped as if my feet were tangled up. My shoelaces had been tied together. Not bad, Satoko. While I was sleeping, you were able to conceal your presence and able to pull off this fine piece of work. The teacher came, right, came in right as I was about to pull off my shoe and tackle Satoko. Ho oh, ho ho, did you not notice that our teacher has arrived, Keiichi-san? Take your seat. Wow. Not caring one bit, I made her eat a flick to the forehead. Wah! Keiichi-san is being mean! Hey, don't pick on the younger kids, Maya Barakun. Apologize to her. I saw Statoko stick her tongue out at me, that little brat. Come on, Maya Barakun. Yeah, yeah, I'll apologize. Sorry, satoko san in any case, I apologize even if it was in a completely insincere tone of voice. Damn her, I'll remember this. Okay, John, okay, John, get your revenge at this club meeting. Take your seat, take your seat. I sat down after Mion told me to. She'd switched the to class representative mode. I still like Mion. 
and I will be heartbroken if she's actually involved in this. I would be devastated. I legitimately will be really sad. Because I really like her. With the boring classes finished, school was finally over for the day. Now then, what should we do for our club today? Personally, I would like to play that deduction game one more time. I was hardly able to play it last time because of Oishi-san. Rena and I weren't, a weren't even able to test out our strategy. That's right, today Keiichi-kun and I will be victorious. What should we do? We've never played the same game two days in a row before. Why not try asking me? Mion looked over her shoulder as it as we made eye contact. She slowly tapped her palm with her fist as her face lit, suddenly lit up. Oops. Completely forgot I need to go help my uncle today. Sorry guys, not today. Helping your uncle? Are you a little goody two shoes? Aren't you a little goody two shoes? That's better. Sorry, really. I really did forget. Well then, sorry guys. This old man is heading back home to now. Mion left us with that and rushed off to the exit after snatching up her bag. Y you see me, Chan? She sometimes goes to help out her uncle shop in town. Ah, I thought she wasn't the type to get caught up in such bothersome stuff. She said that she gets paid for it. It's quite a bit of spending money from what I hear. I see. She was able to pay for, for that mountain of games with what she saved up from he, from there. But that, wouldn't you call that a part-time job? Isn't that against school policy? There's a clause that states family businesses are excluded. Is that what she's calling it? So what now? Pass on the club today? So we're done today? I guess, I guess. No, we can still play. I mean, just because Mion's not here doesn't mean we can't play. I mean, I I would prefer Mion being here, but whatever. Wouldn't it be fine even without the class pro club president? Let's do this. See? There you go, Keiji. I opened up the club locker and began searching for the deduction game from that ever-growing pile of games. Ah, here it is. The deduction game from yesterday. I had to stop just as I was getting a hang of it. At the very least, I wanted to repay Satoko for what she did during the afternoon break. I don't mind. But is that fine for Renaissance and Rika? Um, if Keiichi Kun wants to so badly, I wouldn't mind playing for a bit. I think it's better if we do it when we have everyone together. Hmm, when she says it like that, hmm. Wanted to go shopping if there wasn't a club meeting today. Going to buy soy sauce and other things. Oh, that's right. I completely forgot. Well, I guess it's since it's been a while, I should go treasure hunting. What's this now? Everyone was no longer in the mood for club activities? I kept on trying to push the matter. It may make them realize I had a trick up my sleeve. Ah oh, well, I'll give up this time. And I really was looking forward to playing it. I shuffled through the cards as if I, I was still caught up on it. At the next opportunity, I shall give you a sound thrashing. Oh, ho ho! The murderer is Satoko. The murder weapon is at the pistol, and it was you after all. What, what did you say? Then I'll just... Satoko looked through the cards at the desk and stuck out three of them at me. The murderer is Keiichi, in the lounge with the rope. I don't need a no rope. I'll just strangle you it like this. No! Keiichi-san is such a beast! Well, I guess it's a good that I got that out of my system. Blah! I'll remember this, Keiichi-san. No, oh, fuck her. She was used to as a plaything for quite a while. How unfortunate. Aw, cute cute! Everyone got ready to go back home. I also helped gathered up the scattered cards. I suddenly paused. 
They were just the suspect cards, but I noticed something strange. Rena, Satoko, Rika, Keiichi, Mion. Satoshi. Sat Sat Satoshi or Satoshi? I'll say Satoshi. Not all the cards were made by us. Or at least every card describes this one. This one has the name of a club member. Does it mean that this Satoshi fellow is a member? Was there someone in the class named Satoshi? I couldn't find anyone named Satoshi on the class roster which stuck up on the wall. Keiji kun, let's hurry and finish cleaning up! Being rushed by Rena, I finished up quickly. Satoko and Rika chen had already headed merrily to the for their locker, so we were the only ones left in the classroom. Right now, Rena had already gotten her bag and was ready to leave. Hey, Rena. There must be quite a few people who transfer from the school, right? I tried asking Renda in a, round a, a bit of a roundabout way. Rena made a troubled face and then answered. Yeah, Hinamiz Hinamizawa is a rural, rural town, right? Some people transfer out every now and then. Then is Satoshi another one of these transferees? Sorry, I don't really know. It was a bit of a pause, but the answer was pretty much immediate. Uh, um, I'm not saying it to be mean. Just last year, I transferred in, so maybe I just missed him. So I didn't hear much about him. Sorry. Hmm, I don't know. I'm not sure. Sorry. Her answer was a lot like when she refused to tell me about the murder about at the dam. I was saddened by her denial and felt a little bit of anger. I'm their friend, aren't I? Friends don't keep secrets from their friends, do they? Though I do appreciate that they kept that unsettling curse thing from me. But, if everyone is worried about it, I'd rather be worried with them. That's, that's just what it means to be friends, right? For a moment, I wonder just what kind of face I was making. God damn it. Uh, there. For a moment, I wonder what just kind of face I was uh, face I was making just then with those mixed feelings of sadness and annoyance. Keiichi-kun, you're making a scary face. Why is it? Why? It was probably exactly the kind of face Rena said it was. It appeared my grim expression had frightened her. Ah, oh, sorry. I was really looking forward to the club today. I'm just feeling down a bit about it. I rustled Rena's hair. Let's go home. Dragging that awkward mood with us, we headed home. No shit, it's awkward. Jesus. Still want to know more about this Satoshi guy. Wonder why. Why have I been getting this dumb feeling lately? I didn't know anything. I had nothing to worry about. I was just enjoying it my everyday life. My long, outstretched shadow gave no answers to my naive inquiry. Keiji kun, are you tired, maybe? Maybe? Rena timidly questioned the reason behind my mood. I'm sure my expression made this situation even more unsettling. You think so? Yeah. You seem to have uh, been a little out of it ever since this morning. Maybe a cold? Physically, I was pretty sure I was in perfect health. May not seem like it, but I've had perfect attendance since elementary school. Rena continued on since I didn't give her an answer. It could be that the fatigue from moving has finally caught up to you. It's completely different from where you used to live, after all. Of course you've gotten tired, since there's so much you need to get used to and remember. Maybe that's it. Yeah, has to be. Rena was also like that at first, too. I can tell you, you know. Do you know? See, that's different. Uh, that's actually something interesting. He might not physically be up, uh, uh, fatigued, but mentally he is because he has to keep lying to his friends and all that, and like keeping secrets from them, and realize that they're lying to him. So I mean, it's very easy that he can have like a uh, mental fatigue. That could also make him actually feel sick. Sorry.
I wondered if Renault also experienced the slight bit of alienation last year that I was feeling right now. Thinking so, I felt that she was the only one who could understand how I felt. I'd like to hear about when you first came to Hinamizawa. How was it? Feeling I had been drawn into the conversation, her face suddenly brightened. Ha! <laughs> it was the same as Keiichi-kun. I didn't know the villagers' names at all. Michan and the rest were all very kind, so I wasn't lonely, but I did still feel a bit out of place. Rena told me all the details of when she had moved, had moved here. All of her first acquaintances and surprises, worries and good times. So, Satoko got you too? Yeah, it was a thumbtack put on my chair. Poke. Thin with that, I... yeah. That really takes me back. When were you invited into the club? The first day? Nah, it wasn't a club at the beginning. Wait. If there wasn't a club at the beginning, how does there a uh, Satoshi thing? How is there a Satoshi, uh... Card. If there was no club at the beginning, because... It, why the fuck would Mion buy a second-hand uh, board game? With only one other person's name on it. Strange. I think I just got her in a lie. It was formed partway through. One day she said we should stay after and hold a big game tournament. Come to think of it, Mion did say she was the first club president. Now I get it. This is a secret, but Mi-chan used to be really bad at the beginning. She'd never win. Huh? Mion, really? Can't even imagine that. She had to do the most of the penalties that she came up with. Uh, seriously, don't tell. Can't believe Mion was like that. So she gradually transformed into a monster who had used any means necessary to win during the, that time. Mion is at her best when she's fighting dirty. I began making more friends besides Michan after that, but yeah. It might have only been since you moved here. That I had finally felt like I had gotten used to it here. Guess Rena had also been left in the dark about Oyashiro Sama when she had just moved here. Guess when they finally told me about Oyashiro Sama, I'd be considered one of them. Wonder when I'll finally be considered one of them. Huh? Did he say something? No, sorry. Just talking to myself. <laughs> Keiichi kun, you're silly. Rena was poking fun and laughing at me and I couldn't help but laugh as well, but I suddenly stopped. Then after making up my mind, I spoke. No, no, don't say something stupid. Hey, Rena, is there something that everyone is keeping from me? Huh? N no, not at all. You're lying, aren't you? Rena suddenly stopped. Her expression was cold and intense. What do you mean by that? Keiichi-kun. Her tone was still the same cheery and light-hearted one as before. You are, aren't you? Keeping something from me. Stop it! Stop it! Stop- I'm already getting ready for this fucking scare that's about to happen. I know it! This can never go well. You're gonna get fucking kidnapped now. God, I don't want to press the next button. I know what's gonna happen. I know she's gonna flip the fuck out. Because they already said that she got cold and intense. No, thank you. After understanding what I meant, her expression grew even more intense. No, stop it! Seeing that face, I regretted saying something so rash. But she came back at me in a way I didn't expect. What the fuck? What the hell's happened to her eyes? Uh... Well then, Keiichi-kun. Are you keeping something from us? Huh? Her tone didn't match, but it was the same time I'd seen this expression from Rena. First time I'd seen this expression from Rena. With how her gaze pierced through me, I couldn't believe this was the same Rena. Aren't you? Lies are secrets? Aren't you? Pure. Secrets. She didn't actually say that part, but she looked as if she did. The incident with Tomitake-san, and how I felt an alienated from the group. Got this shit out.
Okay, just cut to the part where the incident. Depending, I'll just listen to it. Whatever, I'll still read this over. Three, two, one. The incident with Tomitake-san and how I felt alienated from the group. Even without having to think about it, there were things I knew that I felt guilty about. But I didn't tell everyone about what happened with Tomitake-san to be considerate. I was keeping a secret just the same way they didn't tell me about Oyashiro-sama. Then, aren't we even? No, I'm not. No lies. Nor secrets. Liar! Her answer was instant and it shook me. Rena stared as if burrowing through me. Stared as if burrowing through me. Watching me like a hawk. Why would you say I'm lying? Didn't you say that you were called into the teacher's room yesterday during the club meeting, Keiichi-kun? I know. You didn't go to the teacher's room. I swallowed hard. Okay, this is actually freaking me the fuck out right now. It clearly was, it wasn't a bluff. She knew what happened. The teacher said you had a guess, didn't she? Uh, uh, fuck me. But you didn't talk at the entrance. You talked inside of the car near the school gate. With some man we don't know. Renna knew everything. She knew that I was called out by Oishi-san, and that I heard about the incident with Tomitake-san as well. Did she know all of it? Exactly who was that man? I, I don't know him. Why did someone who you don't know have business with you? I, I want to know that myself. Then what did he talk- did you talk about? It has nothing to do with you guys. It was a lie. <laughs> Lies! Rinna's scream echoed through the trees. Oh my god, this is... Okay, I'm shitting my- this is creepy as fuck. Oh my god. Sending frightening, frightened birds into the air. I couldn't exhale the deep breath I had just taken. Yeah, I would have inhaled. No! I wouldn't talk at all. No, it was like I wasn't allowed to exhale. It was here. I first realized. The person in front of me, she wasn't Rena Ryugu. Then, who was that just standing before me now? Who had assumed Rena Ryugu's appearance? I had held my breath for so long, I could feel myself suffocating. Right? And then she made a facial expression that Rena normally might have made. It didn't matter that it was Rena's usual smile. It chilled me to the bone. She drew closer to me. I felt her breath against my face. It wasn't the least bit exciting. Nope, uh, that, uh, that last scream and the music change, that killed any emotions going through me at that time. All I fear, feel right now is emptiness and disappointment. Whoever this was with Rena's face was going to chew my nose right off. I cowered as I imagined that. Then she smirked as if she was able to see right through me. We also have secrets, just like how Keiichi-kun has secrets. It was Rena's usual smile, but her eyes were still like that of a hawk's. Her eyes are closed. Bringing her face close enough to mine to almost bump into my nose, she kindly persuaded me. I couldn't nod her or shake my head. This person standing in front of me, this person who looked like Rena, frightened me to my core. I was terrified knowing that she could hear the sound of me swallowing nervously. After what felt like an eternity, after a long empty silence, she finally spoke. Let's go! It's getting chilly. It was Rena again, smiling at me once more. She started walking as if nothing at all happened. Fuck her! Run! I would run! I would run. I wouldn't give a fuck. I would be running my ass off. Just take off the opposite direction. I'm never speaking to you again. When I was released from her gaze, my legs gave out from under me and I slumped down to the ground. I wasn't able to lift a finger until Rena was out of sight. Yeah, no shit. It scared the shit out of me. Jesus. Who was that? I felt cold. My body was drenched in sweat. I was finally able to form a coherent thought and ask myself once again, 
Who was that person? Who looked like Rena Ryugu? Oh, fuck that, man. Oh. Yeah, I'm fucking done for the day after that shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, guess who I'd never fucking talk to again? Fuck Rena. I would never fucking utter another word to her. Jesus. He just permanently excommunicated, her, excommunicated herself from my family and friendship. I was out of it and couldn't bring myself to do anything until dinner except stare blankly into space. Was I terrified from Rena going off on me? No, that's not right. I would fucking be terrified. That was someone else who only looked like Rena. Then who could it have been? It was a dreadful feeling. Knowing that... Knowing that, that someone else, not Rena. So tomorrow I shouldn't have a problem talking to Rena like I usually do. That thought was strangely comforting. I concluded that I just should calm down and clear my head. Those, those thoughts continued swirling around my mind. Tell Oishi! Finally, I returned to my senses as I heard my mother calling up out to me from the bottom of the steps. Keiichi, it's a call from the bookstore. Bookstore? Am I fucking borrowing books now? What the fuck? I don't read. Can't think of why they'd be calling me. I don't know how to read. Why would I? Why would the bookstore call me? See, that's what Keiichi needs to say. Mom, you know I can't read. Why are they calling me? I went downstairs and picked up the receiver anyway. My apologies for calling so late at night. It's me, Oishi from the, of the Okinomiya Bookshop. Oh, Oishi. I thought you were a fucking cop. Oishi-san? Oh, it's Oishi-san. Sorry. Since your parents picked up, I said I was from the bookstore. Puts people off when I say I'm a police officer. Yeah, no shit, I would <laughs> just hang up the phone. No, thank you. <laughs> Oishi-san was, in his own way, rather courteous. Even so, I didn't want my parents hearing my, me talk to the police. I brought the cordless phone with me as I dashed back up to my room on the second floor. Sorry for calling so late. That phone uh, number on the piece of paper I gave you yesterday was the old number. My apologies. Can you copy down the number I'm about to give you? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, okay. He gave me the number for his direct line as I wrote it down. I thought that was the end of it, but we began ta making pointless small talk, and it was pretty hard to hang up. Shut up, Oishi. Hang up. <laughs> so how's it been, Mayabara-san? Did anything strange happen recently? Yes. Yes. I see. This was the real reason. You really beat around the bush here, there. His adult conversational skills left me slack-jawed. Are you from around here, Oishi-san? Yeah, I am. Born and raised in Okinomiya. It's from around here. You might know. I'm Oishi-san. Do you know what this Onikakushi thing is about? I believe that's when somebody suddenly vanishes because they've been abducted by a demon. It's a special saying from around here. It has the same meaning as spirited away, like everyone else says. Whereas my friends would say they didn't know when I asked, this older man gave me a direct answer. It made me a bit happy that he answered me directly without trying to hide anything. Inamizawa was... Mm, not sure if I should tell you this, Mayabara-san. Don't try to play this off. If you're not going to talk, then I'm not going to tell you anything. <laughs> no, no. That's not what I meant. It's just it may make you feel bad. You see, long ago, Hinamizawa was feared as the village where demons reside. Demons? By demons, you mean those pitchfork-carrying things in hell? Hmm, more like human-eating monsters. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's so much fucking better. What the fuck? They'd go down to the village, snatching people up and gobbling them down. That kind of tale. Demons snatching up people is what this Onikakushi really means? They said that if the curse of be and being demoned away happened together, what does that what does that mean? I already knew about the mysterious deaths that happening five years in a row. But I didn't know that there were people disappearing for those same five years. The curse and being demoned away happened together. First time I've heard of that. Is that how it is, Mayabara-san? That's what I want to know. 
I heard Rena and Mion talking. They said that it, if it was really Oyashiro Kusama's curse, then both the, both the curse and the demoning away would happen. Oishi-san began hemming and hawing on the other end of the receiver. Maybe something about that came to mind. My Barasa, do you know the first incident? The murder by dismemberment. Yeah, one of the six perpetrators is still on the run, right? Hypothetically, what if he was isn't on the run, but he was demoned away? Huh? It was an outrageous hypothesis from Oishi-san. The incident four years ago was the particularly ghastly one. The police already knew the perpetrators, so they posted tons of wanted pictures with the faces on them. They sta staked out various locations and investigated every possible escape route he, ha route he had. But after four years, there, there wasn't even a hint of where he might be, unless the police were completely incompetent. Even if, what, if it was an outrageous hypothesis, I couldn't simply laugh it off. And what about the in incident the next year? When the man who supported the dam and his wife both died in an accident. Well, actually, it was only the husband who died in an accident. His wife's body never surfaced. Unless we find the body, then it's considered a missing person by law. At the time of the incident, with the river below the cliff during muddy rapids, the police divers had searched every branch off the main stream of the river for dozens of miles, but in the end, they weren't able to find her body. But that's just them not being able to find the body. She's still dead, right? Isn't it different from her being demoned away? We cannot say someone is dead without her body. Until a certain amount, number of years pass, by law she's treated as still alive. Not sure if it was right to call that being demoned away. The wife is missing. At least that part was reality. How about the third year? The Shinto priest died of illness. And his wife committed suicide. Yeah, they never found her body because she jumped into the marsh. Mayabara-san. Huh? That's actually the exact same scenario. The wife had supposedly thrown herself into the bottomless marsh but deep in the forest in Hinamizawa. Meaning it's all circumstantial evidence. They simply found her suicide note in front of the marsh. A diver was able to recover a few remnants but they weren't able to find a body. The investigative headquarters believe that she had faked her death and was still alive somewhere. I'm not sure if we could call the, the these cases as being demoned away. Just as you've said, every year one person goes missing. The incident this year, the woman with Tome Takesan had gone missing. Jesus. Mayabara, that is what demoned away is. And what about the incident with the housewife beaten to death? Who went missing? I believe the perpetrator was caught, right? Yeah, we arrested him. He was just a miscreant with a record of narcotics abuse. He admitted to the crime while being questioned about a different incident. But, well, you see, after he was arrested, a child from the victim's home went missing. It's still under investigation. As to whether the disappearance had anything to do with the crime. But you said you caught him, right? Did he have an accomplice? No idea. It's considered a separate case. Moreover, we can't even check now, because while under investigation, that man, he died in his holding cell. He swallowed a spork and choked to death. It's not even, it's not known whether it was an accident or a suicide. You can't fucking accidentally swallow a spork. That had to be suicide. Meaning for the last five years, there's always one person who dies and one who goes missing. That's about right. No, actually, I'm surprised as well never realized they had that in common. I can't believe the, that this could help lead to the closing of these incidents. It was just uh, something they had in common. Could it be that those demoned away have something in common? Oishi-san mumbled as he seemed to be thinking about it. So I summarized the events. First year was the dam employee. Second year was the wife of the dam project supporter. Third year was the wife of the Shinto priest. Fourth year was the victim's family's child, and the fifth year was gr victim's girlfriend, I guess. Doesn't seem like there's anything that connects them. 
with the exception of the first year wives and girlfriends, these those do stand out. Does seem like there are a lot. Then that means the fourth year's victim's child was different. It would have really stood out if it were all married couples, except it's not just married couples, but parents and children as well. Come to think of it, I believe Tomitake also told me the younger brother is alive and has moved, if I recalled correctly. The child that went missing in the fourth year, who were they? Apparently he was quite mature, one year older than you. His name was Satoshi Hojo. Oh shit, the bad. No. Satoshi? I remember that name. Didn't they tell me Satoshi transferred out last year? He was at your school up until last year. Didn't they tell you anything about him? Come to think of it, when I transferred in, I believe they said my seat belonged to a recent transfer student. And where I sat, once belonged to this to the one who was demoned away. It was his seat. Oh, this music is sending chills down my fucking back. I recall the cold sensation that came from that desk. It made my hair stand on end. This string of mysterious, mysterious deaths. No, Oyashira Sama's curse. I now knew how it connected to me. That chilling sensation. It was the feeling of Oyashira Sama caressing the back of my neck. Oh, ooh. Oh, I can feel that. Ooh, stop it. Stop it. Oyashira Sama's curse, huh? Could Oyashiro Sama's curse really exist? In all honesty, I was beginning to believe it. I was scared. Now that's why I wanted to say it was a plot crafted by a man and not the work of a curse. But the more I dug into it, the less likely that seemed. No, the more I dug in, dug, the more mysterious it became. I kept digging, eventually, I'd reached the point where I'd learned something I really shouldn't know. You're already fucking past that point, you're fucked either way, so might as well keep going. So fuck you, Cage, you're gonna die. To either be none the wiser, or to seek an answer I may regret. Which one would I be happier with? None the wiser? Maybe I'll be the next- It'll be me next time. My execution could only be delayed for one year. That was when I remembered. Rena. Rena said she may be the next victim of the curse. You mean Rena Ryugu-san? She transferred in last year and she's your classmate, isn't she? These incidents really m might be a bit too disturbing for a girl. She's not just scared, is she? It wasn't that. She said she said it might be her next. She said it in a way that made me think she had a concrete reason behind it. Felt like she was convinced. Almost as if, um, you could say... She was frightened. Her sudden change in demeanor. Now, there, that was someone who looked like Rena, but wasn't Rena. It might be unrelated. All the strange things that I felt from Rena today came back to me. I see. Now I'll be doing a bit of investigating on this end. Please continue your observation of Ryugu-san, Mayabara-san. Are you asking me to keep Rena under surveillance? That's not what I mean, Mayabara-san. I just want you to watch out for your friend so she doesn't end up next, the next victim. That moment, just as my mouth was agape because I was so impressed with his mature, clever way of, with words. Knock, knock. Oh god, no, 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 no. Creepy. A sudden knock at the door sent my heart racing. Yeah, I would fucking piss myself. In an instant, I had pointlessly covered up the end of the receiver. Gagey, get the door, please. Please. I heard my father's uh, oddly upbeat voice. What could it be? It's too so late. Sorry, my dad just came in. Can we leave it at that, at this for tonight? Yeah. My apologies again for calling so late. If you find out anything else, please let me know. I'll tell you if I make my progress on this end. Well then, have a pleasant evening. Keiichi, hurry and up and open up. Daddy's got his hands full. What's dad doing? I had stayed in the same position while on the whole phone the whole time, so my joints were aching. God, I hate that fucking feeling. When I opened the door, I saw my father was standing there with a tray. On that tray, cookies and two cups of black tea. A fairly fancy spread for our household. 
There was even sugar and lemon slices on the side. Anything you could ask for. This was quite the show of hospitality. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> I didn't know I just started living here. What the fuck? What's going on, Dad? What's all this for? Come now, don't play around, Keiichi. I'm coming in. Dad was in high spirits and had a smirk on his face. But for my entire life, I've never seen him act this hospitable. What had gotten into him? So, what were you talking about? I jumped. It's not something I had to keep from my father. But how could I explain to him I was talking to a detective? I'm assuming he was. This late at night. N nothing much. Just a friend. I don't mean the phone. She was here, wasn't she? Renachan. Oh, uh, what? Uh, what? What? This music's not helping either. What? Yeah, question fucking mark, yes? She wasn't here. Come now, don't try to keep it from me. She just came over to play. You two were chatting away, so I thought I'd bring some tea. But looks like I just missed her. I had no idea what Dad was talking about. But a cold sweat dripped down my back. No shit. How long were you t we talking? Renachan went upstairs about half after, so it was close to an hour, I guess. What the fuck? Do I remember ever seeing her? You saw her come up the to the second floor. Yeah, I did. I also told her that your room was the door down the hall up the stairs. Rena came to my house about an hour ago. Dad met her at the door and called out to me on the second floor. I probably didn't hear him because I was so focused on my conversation with Oishi-san. I didn't reply, but he knew I was in my room, so he had come, had her come inside and told her my room was on the second floor. She thanked my dad and went upstairs. In about an hour passed, she passed by my dad just as he was bringing up tea and left. She came upstairs and about an hour passed, then passed by my dad and returned home. Th then... After she came upstairs and until she left, where was Rena? There's only a short hallway between my room and the stairs. Meaning, Rena had, for about an hour, in the hall. No, she couldn't have been standing in front of my door all that time. The door to my room wasn't particular, particularly thick. She could easily hear everything being said inside. After all of the ominous things and all the nonsense I spoke to Oishi-san about, began rushing through my head. Honey, don't tease him. More importantly, you need to clean up your studio. It's a mess again. Mom yelled up at Dad from downstairs. Dad left the tray with me and went downstairs with a disappointed chortle. I followed my dad out the room with my eyes. I looked down the floor around the doorway where Rina might have stood all that time. Just now, as I was talking to Oishi-san, with my back turned, Rena was standing a mere six feet away the whole time. All that time in this dimly lit doorway. What did she see? What did she hear? For what reason? As the steam from two teacups ominously wafted and twisted, the aroma of black tea filled my room. Oh fuck no man. Fuck no. I want to move back to the city. No thank you. Yeah, and P.S. Fuck this. I am done for the day. Too creepy. Too damn creepy. Notice from the police chief. Yeah, I'll fucking read that next time because fuck this game. I am done. Jesus fucking Christ. I am. Yeah, lies no shit. Creepy as fuck. No thank you. I want to leave this damn town. Other than that, I will, re I will continue this gameplay. I'll just take a couple days off. Because this is, is creepy as fuck. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, favorite, comment, and subscribe. So you get to watch me just shit myself as, you know, horror starts to unfold. And see you guys next time. And this is a little bit of a longer episode just because I didn't find a nice place to cut it off. And it actually had me really enraptured about what the hell was going on, even if it had me pissing myself. Other than that, see you guys next time.